I, I don't know what to tell you. I'm just in my Animal Crossing era and I am adoring it. And I and thank you for joining me. It's Kirsten and we're at the start of another weekly reading vlog and I'm in the middle of a book because I did not finish it last week which is Only a Monster by Vanessa Len. I'm really enjoying this. This is a young adult, I think it's young adult, could be wrong on that but it feels like a young adult fantasy book and it takes the concept of a hero and a villain and kind of twists it on its head. We're following our villain of the story and Joan is, she goes to her family every summer like she comes to London every summer to spend time with her mum's side of the family and they've always referred to themselves as monsters and she's always kind of thought it was a funny eccentric joke as her family on her mother's side is very weird and very eccentric but she loves it she loves coming to London until she realizes that actually they are actual monsters and the hero well he's out to kill them all I loved this I mean I say loved, loving, I am loving this. It is so, so good. I found it so easy to read and I find the setting really compelling. It's set in London, but it's set across like different time because it's a time traveling magic in here, which is amazing. And it's not something I normally like, but I really like the way this one is done. So I'm really enjoying that. And I like how we're learning about the different monsters. There are different monster families. Each family has their own unique gift and you're learning all about those because Joan is so new to it because she didn't realise she was a monster. She didn't realise that this was a thing. She is learning it all at the same time. So it doesn't feel too info dumpy because you're learning alongside her as she is figuring everything out. And it's so good. I mean, the storyline itself is really sad, the way it's going, but I'm so intrigued because it is taking the usual plot points and kind of twisting it. Like, I don't know where this is going and I'm really, really enjoying that. I mean, I said it in last week's vlog when I was first reading this and that young adult fantasy and with some fantasy in general I've read so much of it that I can see where it's going but in this I just don't really know like I can see threads that would be similar to other things but it just changes what it's doing in such a good way and I'm really enjoying the conversation around villains and heroes and is it all just a matter of perspective and I love that I love when that gets played with so I'm really enjoying this it's definitely a book that I, I could have annotated to really explore those themes um, but I just haven't been feeling like annotating lately. I mean, I feel like I want to, but I haven't really been feeling it and now I'm too far in for me to go back and I, it's probably something I'm going to do on reread is go through those different themes, but I'm just enjoying this. I'm enjoying our characters. I'm enjoying the potential romance in here. It's a subplot and it is slow burn, so I'm really enjoying that. And I just, I'm intrigued. I'm really looking forward to seeing where it's going and to finding more about the magic system. I'm really intrigued and I really like the setting of this. I'm loving this. This is really good. So I'm planning to finish this this week but I of course have more books that I want to read off my TBR. I'm thinking of picking up the Discord book next uh, for our book club for this month, which let me go and get, uh, which is The Cloisters by Catty Hayes. Some people have already read this on Discord. I haven't started it yet, so I'm thinking to read this once I finish Only a Monster. And I might pick up another book, I'm not really sure. I'm just gonna kind of mood read out of my TBR this week, I think, but with priority on finishing Only a Monster and starting The Cloisters. I'm really intrigued by this one. This is a dark academia that's surrounding tarot. I think it's going to be awesome. It takes place in New York in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. So I'm really intrigued to see how that's going to go. So I'm looking forward to that. So I think that's going to be the reader news. As for stuff that I need to do this week, I've got some food shopping that I'm going to do as soon as I finish this update. I also have my reset video that I've just started, which I'm a bit behind on. So today I'm going to be doing quite a lot for that, which you'll be seeing soon. That comes out at the end of January for February's reset. I need to get a few things done like that. Tomorrow is going to be a full-on filming day and I am going to be filming a separate how I get things done video where I go through my plans for YouTube, how I film everything, how I get things edited and what that all entails as like working full time and stuff. It was a video idea from Kayla on Discord. So I'm gonna be filming that. That's what we're going on with and then I will be back to work and then I'm on my late shift. So we've got quite a bit to do. I'm getting ready to wrap up this intro bit and I've realized actually, 
I've had a parcel sitting there staring at me the whole time that I was saving for this bit. So let's open this. This is going to be the very last locked library book box that I have. I've now cancelled the subscription. I do love the books. I think they are stunning. However, the last like six months, I haven't really been that invested in the books that have been coming out apart from one of them. If I'm paying for something, I want to make sure I'm getting the full enjoyment out of it. Now this book, I already know what it is because the locked library are now starting this second book box subscription where they're going to be doing special editions of previous books that they've published not like their lot library subscription where it's new releases that are coming out that are special editions only within this book box instead it's going to be books that they've published previously but doing in a special edition that's exclusive to the lot library which i like the idea of however for the very first book of it they spoiled what it was they did a whole instagram reel and they didn't put any spoilers like any spoiler warning and a lot of people were really frustrated with that i me being one of them i mean it's one of those things like you get spoiled you get spoiled but it would have been a really nice surprise anyway i know what this one is it's going to be a very pretty edition it is actually a book i've already read but i don't own i actually listened to it as an audiobook it was one of two audiobooks that i listened to last year and i did like it and i did say I would want a physical copy to read. It was a very good audiobook and it was very interesting, but I feel like reading it, you'd get a bit more out of it, especially because of things like footnotes. So this is Babel by Arif Kwan. And it is a naked hardback design, which I actually really like. It is gorgeous. I really like this stained glass window and I like these edges as well and the end papers are gorgeous so I do think they've done an absolutely stunning job with this book so I'm really pleased that I have it it's not a duplicate I did want a copy of Babel so I can read it physically because I think there was a lot in this book that was really interesting we're following Robin as a main character who ends up going to this institute called Babel where they are translating work and it discusses a lot about translation like is it right that we translate things because a lot of things get lost in translation there is a bit of a magic system surrounds the magic of not being able to fully translate something that you do lose things in translation i think it calls a lot of different things into question it was really interestingly done but i also think it was very heavy-handed it almost felt like arv kwan had to hold your hand through everything that she didn't trust that you could make these connections on your own but i don't know whether that's just because i was reading that through audiobook and so i wasn't concentrating on everything or not but I'm intrigued. So I'm looking forward to eventually rereading this. I am very pleased I've got this very nice edition of it. It's just, I wish they hadn't spoiled it. But right, now that's it for this very long intro. I'm actually going to go. So yeah, let's go do some food shopping actually. Come along with me, do some food shopping. And hopefully today I can squeeze in a bit of reading, get a little bit more of Only a Monster read. It is almost the afternoon and I have had a really productive couple of days. Ins and outs of the, what I've been up to in the last couple of days, that will actually be in different videos. So one will be the productive day vlog and one will be the reset video, which as you can see from the reset video, we have been preparing for February's videos with the hearts and stuff in the background. I'm really liking it. It's really fun. I like doing all these little DIY things. It's, it's really good. I have some reading updates for you because I finished Only a Monster and this was really, really good. I really enjoyed it. 
the twist at the end I did not see come in and it was so good I think it was so well done this is definitely a book that deserves a, to be talked about a lot more it's also one that you could read as a standalone if you wanted to I think the way it all wraps up it does end in a way that you can just stop there if you want. I will be continuing on as I've said I'm going to wait until the second book's out in paperback and there are a couple of like threads where you can see where the second book would go which I am interested in but it does also work as a standalone which I think is really nice. I like that when you can get that in a book that if you're really attached to the characters enough and that you can carry on to the second book but also you don't have to if you don't want to. So I really like that and I just I just think this was really really good for a young adult book. I don't know if it is young adult because I keep seeing it in the adult section of my Waterstones like my local Waterstones but it reads more young adult rather than adult but it's so good it's so accessible and this just reminds me why young adult books can be so good because they can explore different themes in a book but do it in a way that's really accessible so you explore some of these darker themes so for example is a monster really a monster or is it a perception thing and who gets to decide who is the monster and who is a hero I really like that I like the fact that we can have these topics that are discussed within young adult books and done in a way that explores that topic but just in an accessible way you can of course make the topic a lot more complicated and nuanced if you wanted to but also you can just discuss it in this way where it's there the themes are there and you can dive deeper into it if you want to I just I just think it's really really clever how young adult authors are able to tackle topics which need to be talked about a little bit more can have that conversation but done in such a I know I keep saying accessible but accessible way. I just think it's really good. It reminds me why young adult books are really good and why I enjoy reading them and why I like breaking them up and this was really really good and definitely something I would recommend like if you're interested in a bit of time travel magic or just interested in the concepts of monsters and heroes and what makes one read it give it a try it's a good book it was a really easy read really fun and compelling and I didn't see a lot of the things coming so I'm really pleased with that so yeah definitely going to be getting the second book and I have started The Cloisters by Catty Hayes and this I'm enjoying I mean I have just started it I, I'm literally here I'm up to chapter two page so I've read the prologue and chapter one and what I like about this is the prologue kind of sets up for the classic dark academia in terms of it starts with knowing there's a murder. You know there's a murder that's in happened in this book. You don't know all the ins and outs of it but you know there is one and then chapter one is in the past and we're building up to where this murder happened. I really like that it's like a classic thing that I've come to expect from dark academia but we're following Anne and the first chapter is just establishing a few facts. So Anne's father has recently passed away and her and her mum are dealing with this grief in very different ways. And part of how Anne's dealing with it is diving headfirst into her studies. Now she's always been very academic forward. She goes to this university, but she only got into the university because her parents worked there. It's not because they're affluent or well off in any way, like it's an expensive university. As a result, she feels very outcast from the other students that are there. Plus her studies themselves aren't as trendy as others. So this book is already setting up for the conversations around the elitism in academia. So the fact that you will get further in academia if you have the money behind you it will open up more doors and more things as well as what you study it has to be something that is trendy enough to capture the interest of others otherwise like what Anne's finding is that she's focused on an area of study that's seen as obsolete she focuses in an area of history that's been really focused on but she likes to focus on the objects and things that people don't find that interesting they don't have any want to study it whereas she's like I want to give all of these forgotten objects their agency back again but it's not an area that people want to invest in and so it, it's commenting on all of these things and that's just within the first chapter so I like how it's setting up for what I consider staples of dark academia we have murder and we also have the fact that we're commenting on 
academia and we are criticizing it. So I'm really excited, I'm really intrigued to see where this is gonna go. We have Anne that's going to New York to get away from the grief and everything that's going on, how her mum isn't happy with this because her mum doesn't wanna be left alone and just seeing that little bit of conflict as well there. So I'm really intrigued to see where this is gonna go. I would like to read more of this today. It's only a short book, it's less than 300 pages, so hopefully I can get this done and potentially even start another book. That would be really good, we'll see. Today I actually have a really busy editing day, I've gotta get quite a lot done, but in my breaks from editing I would like to get more of this read. I'm also really feeling to do some more Myrtle. I really enjoy Myrtle. Myrtle, for those of you that don't know, is a puzzle book with different murders that have happened and you've got to try and solve them. I'm really feeling like this. It's a trend I kind of get into is when I'm having an editing day to spend my lunch break doing Myrtle. I don't know why, it just really works for me. I think because it engages my brain in a different way and it's away from the computer and I can just do that. I don't know, I'm, I'm probably gonna do some Myrtle and read a bit of Cloisters and that's kind of the plan today alongside all the editing. With that being said though, it's time to do a hot drink and actually get to editing. So I'm gonna get on and do that. I think that's everything I had to mention. I did the food shopping, I did go to gym. Although I was going to go today, I think I'm going to leave it today, maybe. We'll see how I'm feeling in the evening. I might just go after work, maybe Thursday. We'll see. Anyway, that's enough rambling for me. I'm actually going to get on and do things and do a hot drink. I'm really craving a hot drink. I haven't actually had one today yet. It's already 20 to 12 and I haven't had a hot drink yet. Like I like starting my days with a nice hot drink and I haven't had one. So let's go and do that. different angle because I just could not be bothered to go and get my tripod. I'm feeling a bit more lazy but I have been productive. The productivity has not stopped. So yesterday, as we know, productive day editing, that's all been covered in the productive day video that came out before this video. I did get quite a bit of reading done. So I read a good chunk of the cloisters. I'm now up to chapter 11, page 111. So I have just under 200 pages left to go of this book. It's done subtly, so it's slow moving and it's definitely a dark academia book, but the kind of obsession side of things is quite slow to build and you start seeing all these little tidbits of things that are just not quite right, that maybe, maybe this isn't a good situation to be in and we see how Anne is getting more and more desperate to fit in like she always has done because she's been running away from the grief that she's dealing with which I think this book does a good portrayal of grief and it talks about it well and how Anne just doesn't want to acknowledge it and so she's running away from it and in that she has her desperation to fit in with the cloisters and the people that are there it's very close-knit it's only a select couple of people she's really desperate to fit 
fighting and she feels outcast at times and she really wants to know what's going on and it's that desperation that you know is going to lead her down this path. I think it's done well. I also like the talk about tarot in this. There's a lot about the history of tarot, that's what they're focusing on, that's what they're kind of becoming obsessed with, its properties and what it can potentially do, what it means for culture and stuff. I don't know whether any of the history of tarot in this book is accurate, like I genuinely don't know, I don't know much about the history of tarot, so I can't comment on that but I am enjoying it, I'm enjoying the fact that it's there. Yeah, it's just really interesting and I see all these kind of little moments where things do not feel right, where things feel slightly sinister in tone, but it is all slow. So I'd be interested to see if it actually builds to anything. If it stays like this and it doesn't really build to anything, then it will probably be a book that I'm like, oh, it's, it was good because I enjoyed the tarot side of things of this and I enjoyed those little nuances, but it isn't anything amazing and it doesn't go up there with one of my favourite Dark Academia books because it hasn't built to anything. But like I say, I do have just under 200 pages left to go, so we've got time to build up to things. It would just be interesting to see whether it does or not. So I can definitely see why not everyone would get on with this book because it is such a slow moving character study more than anything else. There isn't any like big plot twist, there's nothing building at the minute, it's just slow subtle and you see those sense of things that are wrong between a professor and another student that's helping out for the summer. All these things are so intertwined but in such a wrong way. The atmosphere, the atmosphere of this book is something that I'm really enjoying and I just think it's got that sense of wrongness to it that things are too intimate and too corrupted it's nothing explicit, so it's not something you can put your finger on and go, ah, that's what it is. It's more subtle little sentences here and there that are building to that feeling. So that's why I'm really intrigued to see whether it actually brings up any more or whether it's just me reading into it. But I mean, that's, that's the whole point of a book is that everyone's gonna read different things into a book and make those different connections, so. Yesterday I did do some Myrtle, I did a few little puzzles of this which I really enjoyed. We know I'm enjoying this, I've talked about it on my channel quite a lot, I really enjoy it, it's a lot of fun to do. I also did cooking, so I've got meal prep done for the next few days now, so that makes my life a little bit easier. But yesterday overall was just a really productive day and I also got some Animal Crossing done which I was really pleased with. Definitely something I want to balance my time a bit better in being able to enjoy all my different hobbies which I did think I touched on last week's vlog um but yeah I'm, I'm trying to balance things out so like this morning I took an hour to get myself ready have a shower all of that stuff and then I've taken an hour to edit which now the productive day video is fully edited so that's exporting and now after this update I am going to take an hour to either play Animal Crossing or read we're gonna do both but I'm only doing an hour of each and that way I get to do all the different things that I want to do before I head off to work so trying to find that better balance which speaking of work actually I have decided to take Tales of the Macabre to work with me so this is the one that won for the classic book option for the month it was really tight I'm not gonna lie it was a really really tight call between this and the collector but this one won I think by like one point so I'm gonna be taking this one with me short story collection there are 13 short stories that I haven't read because I've already read the vampire so it will just be finishing off this collection so what I'm thinking of doing is taking this to work and reading it on my lunch break and that will probably keep me busy for the next seven days that I'm at work. So I can read one or two little short stories while I'm on my breaks at work. The so fingers crossed this week we're going to finish The Cloisters and read a few short stories. That would be really good. Also play a bit of Animal Crossing. I really want to make an effort to balance things a bit better. But anyway, I'm now repeating myself so I'm going to disappear and actually get to chilling out and playing on Animal Crossing. I think that's going to be the next thing I do. I'm really looking forward to it so I think we're going to do that and then I'll catch up with you in a few days time when I've got some more reading updates. Bye.
have had a pretty productive couple of days. I feel like that's just what this week's been, is really productive, which is exactly what I wanted, although today I've woken up with a headache. I still did my hour worth of editing this morning, so I'm pleased I've still got that done, but the headache's getting to me, so I don't know how much reading I'm gonna get done today, which, talking about reading, I have 100 pages left of The Cloisters. I'm now up to chapter 18, page 196, so I have exactly 100 pages left, and I had planned to read 50 pages today and 50 pages tomorrow to finish it, but with this headache, I don't know how much reading I'm gonna get done because sometimes when I have a headache, I'm fine to read and other times I just can't process it. So we'll see. I'm hoping that some of the painkillers and that kick in, but I woke up with it and they're always the worst ones because they're the ones that tend to stay all day, which is not what was wanted, but never mind. But The Cloisters, it is a slow moving story. It does have all the hallmarks for Dark Academia, the obsession over tarot, the hyperfixation, the desperation to fit in, the close knit exclusivity of what they're studying as well. But there's a few things that just aren't quite working up that I feel like this could end up being quite forgettable in a way because the atmosphere is good and I like that but it does feel like I would forget it like I've read quite a lot of Dark Academia you can see my Dark Academia shelf here and a few of them have been really memorable and really stand out and sometimes that happens after I finish the book where I'm like oh it was okay it was like middle of the road but then it hasn't left me and that happened with like Summer Suns, These Violent Delights. So like these ones here, these four here were really really good and I've enjoyed all of them. And then I've read other Dark Academia books that I enjoyed while reading that I think were good for Dark Academia but are also a little bit forgettable and they're only ever going to be mentions in a Dark Academia video rather than ones I actively think about and I feel like the cloisters could fall under that and I don't want to give much away because of spoilers. At the start of this book you know that a murder's happened and honestly I was expecting more build up, more tension around it but it was just kind of like a oh and that's it and that's a bit disappointing so I'll be interested to see how the last hundred pages go but I feel like nothing's ever really gonna build I think it's just going the way it is like there's no there's no pace into it like it's very slow pace there's gonna be nothing that picks up the pace in and there's nothing that really makes you go oh this is building to something because it's just not when you feel like it should be I, d I don't know how I feel about it I like it I find it interesting I find the tarot interesting other than that it just doesn't <laughs> much so yeah I don't, I don't know and I think that's been the biggest takeaway from people that have been reading this is just how slow moving it is and how there isn't anything plot wise to really be like oh wow that was really like tension filled and things like that like there isn't there are stuff that happens that in a other dark academia books the way it's been done just feels so much more gripping but in this one it just doesn't so that's a bit of a shame but at the same time it still does criticize academia it criticize the elitism of it all and i like those discussions but again it's not really building anything i feel like this book could have been pushed so much further than what it has been and I feel like this book is playing it safe which isn't what I want I want something that really pushes those boundaries and really grips you and makes you feel like all oh, on the edge of your seat and stuff and it's it just not not a book that I can't put down like I can definitely put down after my 50 pages I'm like yeah okay cool I'm gonna move on to something else like it's fine anyway moving on we have the other book that I've been reading at work and honestly I haven't made much progress with these short stories I thought I would have read so much more by now but it's not happened yes Today was a chaotic day at work it was all over the place but I have read two and a half short stories so the first short story that I have read obviously apart from the vampire okay let's have a look so we have Sir Guy Evelyn's Dream which is by Horace Smith and this was interesting it was only eight pages long basically what boils down to this person that is a gambler and he's a womanizer and his sister's begging him like change your ways like come on just just settle down get married you know just change and he's like nope I will never do this until he sees this amazing woman that just suddenly appears in his room and he's like you are gorgeous you will be my wife and then things spiral from there. It is Tales of the Macabre, so it's obviously darker in tone. Honestly, I just found it funny. Like, I found it actually hilarious. It was so silly, but also I love the writing of this because obviously what I summarised there is basically 
what happens but the way it's written and stuff it's like so extravagant and over the top with the writing I love it I think it was really good so yeah so that one was just funny to me I really enjoyed that one then we have Confessions of a Reformed Ribbonman by William Colton and this one was slightly longer it's 20 pages long and I liked it it was interesting it was basically mob mentality how you can get stuck into this group of people and things just spiral out of control and it's very violent it was done really well it really showed the chaoticness how mob mentality can grow how things spiral out of control and how evil things can be done like how evil man can be like how we can really just let loose and cause all sorts of cruelty and violence upon one another um so it was really interesting for that i think that was a very interesting look at it the writing i like but the next one the one that i'm actually in the middle of is monos and damanos by edward bowler and this is my favourite so far and I'm only halfway through it so it's not a long one it's 10 pages long it's really good I really like the writing in this we're following a character who is really secluded likes his own company has been brought up that way has been taught by mother nature on how to really appreciate nature and everything and honestly the descriptions in this are gorgeous I am so intrigued to see if this author's written anything else because I would 100% pick it up I really like the writing and now we're at this point where our main character has somehow from going from people that would kind of leave him on his own leave him to his own thing not really interact with him which is what he preferred to having this person that won't leave him alone and it's like his own personal hell he hates it but it's also really like insidious at the same time like really dark and i like it i'm really intrigued to see where that's going to go so hopefully i can read a bit more of this yeah i'm enjoying it i mean classic books always take me a little bit longer to read but i would really like to finish that and maybe even read the next one which is the master of logan by alan cunningham now obviously I'm not going to be able to finish all of these short stories this week but hopefully the next time I pop in I will have read a little bit more because there's some really interesting ones in here so I'm looking forward to it and I do enjoy a short story collection to sample authors works to see which authors I would like to find more of like I said this one Edward Bowler was I mean that's my favorite so far I really like the writing I mean even over the vampire by John Poldori I just I think the way he describes things is really really good I really enjoy it I'm really pleased with that gonna be reading some more and then of course I've been playing Animal Crossing I have been doing an hour of Animal Crossing a day so I don't know if I've already said if I have I'll edit it out I sit down and edit for an hour I play Animal Crossing for an hour and then I read for an hour and I'm really enjoying that because I get to one get YouTube stuff done and read and also Animal Crossing and I'm really back in Animal Crossing like I've always enjoyed it but I think because I've never found the right balance to be able to play Animal Crossing alongside the YouTube work especially when I'm at work I work nine hour shifts and then also trying to fit in editing and things for YouTube and also reading for YouTube and it just it made it so I never felt like I had time and now that I'm actually like taking a break relaxing maybe not putting so much pressure on myself to read multiple books in a week it's just so good and I'm really back enjoying Animal Crossing and I love it it's such a good game I could honestly sit there for hours and play this game like it is so relaxing I really enjoy it I'm also back into watching YouTubers play Animal Crossing it's like I've always really enjoyed especially when it's relaxing to watch and two I love getting ideas for different areas on your island and stuff like oh I'm having such a good time this afternoon I'm at work this morning I'm I don't know I want I will play Animal Crossing for an hour because actually weirdly I find that that's not too bad so I have two types of headaches one which is made worse by computer screens and then one is the ones that I wake up with which are just there and no matter what I do it's there it doesn't get any worse so this is a good time to play animal crossing because that's not going to make it any worse and it's so low commitment i don't have to think which is why reading can sometimes be awkward when i have a headache like this i just can't focus and, and that's the problem so we'll see I, i'll probably try and read at least like 30 pages or something thankfully i don't have to cook today because i cooked enough the other day for a good few days so that's really good i don't have to cook till tomorrow which tomorrow i'm very excited for the meal that i'm gonna do this clip has gone on for long enough i'm actually gonna go and update my research vlog and then i'm gonna chill out and play animal crossing until it's time to do some lunch hopefully this headache leaves before i have work
which would be great. Oh wait, I forgot to tell you, I did start an ebook actually because it was so chaotic yesterday, I didn't have any time to sit down and read on my lunch break, but I got a few moments in every so often where I could read a little bit on my phone. That's why I actually love the Kindle so much because you can just quickly whip it out if you've got a spare five minutes, you can do that. Anyway, I have started a romance book, a contemporary romance book, which is very different for me. I feel like that may be a bit of a lie now because I've read a couple and I've enjoyed them. But anyway, this recommendation came from Jan. I'll have her channel linked below. She was talking about how good it was and how fantastic the series is. And I was like, you know what? Okay, fine, I'll give it a try. It was really busy yesterday. I was like, I need something that I can just read and not care about and not think about. And it doesn't matter if I don't like it, if I end up DNFing it in the first like 50 pages, like that's no problem. I don't care, like I just want something. Actually, I'm really enjoying it. I'm now up to chapter 11, page 91. We've got two perspectives in this. One is Vivian and Vivian, her family is new money. So this is like a rich people drama. So her family's new money and they're really trying to be established. But in the society where you have loads of money and there's like millionaires and billionaires and stuff, you're only only really going to be respective if you come from old money and the only way for Vivian's family to come from old money now is to marry into it and so her family has always been very strict on who she can date, who is acceptable and that if she doesn't get married by a certain age well they're going to arrange one for her which is kind of what's happening now. And then we have Dante and Dante is this Italian billionaire who has never wanted to marry, he's not interested but Vivian's father is now blackmailing him and he's blackmailing him into marrying his daughter so that they can have the prestige that comes with his family name. And he's not happy about this at all. So you get both perspectives. I'm actually really enjoying it. It's really fun. I just like rich people drama. Like it's good fun. It's easy to read and I'm enjoying the little bits of tension between them. So yeah, this seems to be pretty solid at the minute. So hoping today, honestly, that I won't actually read any more of that, that I will focus on this. If I can have a sit down break, that would be great, but we'll see. I've got the extra ebook if I want it, but I'm thinking more to read that next week but I figured I should probably mention it here just in case I read more of it over the next couple of days if it ends up being again being busier days at work but I am really enjoying this ebook I mean my priority is actually this because I really want to get more read out of the short story collection but King of Wrath you know what I'm enjoying it it's this the King of Sins series but I, I'm enjoying it it's really good I like it so I'm repeating myself I'm now going to go and um yeah let's update the other video and then chill out with Animal Crossing. Good morning. I am feeling really tired this morning, but I also have energy and I want to do loads of things. And I don't think it helped that I stayed up late after I got back from work. So I finished work at midnight and then I stayed up even later watching Animal Crossing videos. I, I don't know what to tell you. I'm just in my Animal Crossing era and I am adoring it. And I found this YouTuber, which I'm sorry if you don't care about Animal Crossing, but I adore it. And so I'm talking about it. But I found this um, YouTuber called Melissa Verse, I'll have her linked below, and she is doing a Valentine's Fairy Court Island, and I am obsessed. I am obsessed with this. Now, this is not a build that I would ever do, but I just, I love it. I love all the colours, I love the different things that she's coming up with, and it's so good. Like, I'm loving it. It is so good. Now, I am a little bit obsessed, and it made me want to wear my Barbie jacket, which my Barbie jacket is just a really thin denim jacket that I picked up from Thailand a little while ago, and it is probably my favourite item of clothing. And I can't wear it because we're in winter, and it's so frustrating. So every opportunity I can, I just kind of take it out of my wardrobe just to be like, ah, look, it's so cute. It doesn't even go with what I'm wearing, but I'm going to go with it because I love it. So that's just where we're at. And my hair is a mess because I just could not be bothered to do anything with it today. It's literally in a claw clip out of the way because I'm just, I'm too tired for it. But like I say, I have a weird bit of energy as well. So this is the mess that we're dealing with, but we are coming to the end of the reading vlog. So let's recap everything I've read and um, the reality that has happened of the cloisters and um, how nobody is really liking that bit. I think that's been the biggest flop. I mean, we've had, out of all the Discord book clubs, book clubs, yeah, Yes, Discord book club picks that we've had since we've started. I think we've only really had two that as a whole we didn't get on with. 
which is pretty impressive to be fair. I don't know how long it's been going on for. I should know. What I am going to do is do a spread in my reading journal to show all the different book club picks we have and like how it went because I don't have anything to track that so I need that. So we're going to put that in, probably do that in the March reset at this point. I might do a weekly reading vlog if I feel like it, but yeah. Anyway, point is, we're going to have to do that. And yeah, uh, it's just not going well. So hang on, I should probably put this down. I don't want to put it down because it's warm and I'm really tired and I want it, but I also need to hold up books. The book's one. Um, but yes, The Cloisters by Catty Hayes. Ah, it's frustrating because I feel like the first hundred pages of this, I was really like, oh, I'm interested. This could go really well. Well, we had the discussions around academia it just kind of touched upon it. it didn't go deep into anything and I thought that's fine you've still got pretty much another 200 pages you can go de deeper into this if you wanted to the tarot parts of it was interesting and again could have gone deeper into it but that's how the whole book felt and that's when I realized that this that's all we were gonna get is it's not gonna go deeper into anything it's not going to explore things so it's a bit of a shame because it's a beautiful book I love the concept of having this obsession over tarot cards and the fact that it does lead to murder and everything, which that's not a spoiler because that's right at the start of the book. That is the first thing you know is that there's been a murder. But it just doesn't go deep enough. It doesn't delve deep enough into the obsession and the cult-like behaviour and all of that. It just doesn't delve deep enough. And that is such a shame. I had quite high hopes at the start of this because I was like, oh, I like this. I like the atmosphere and stuff, as you know, because because you've watched this video but just as it went on nothing was happening and I kept waiting and waiting and nothing was happening that's kind of how everyone's been feeling quite a few people have dnf'd it because they just weren't interested overall it's just been a oh and, and I flicked through the end of this towards the end because as we know I had a headache yesterday and I thought you know what I'm just gonna read parts of this and then I was like nothing's happening I need to see if something happens and so I started skipping ahead a little bit and still nothing happened and all the reveals and things were so predictable that you're like yeah well obviously that's what happened I was kind of hoping there'd be something different just it just never came so I feel like this is going to be such a forgettable book which is such a shame it's like I said there are other dark academia books that do it better I wish that this had gone deeper into things because the tarot bit is what really drew me in and it's just a shame that it just doesn't work. That's a shame unfortunately and a miss. So hopefully the rest of the book club picks for 2024 will be better. To be fair I got this book because it's such a gorgeous edition like I loved the edges, I loved the cover, I loved the end pages and I was just like you know what Dark Academia about tarot that sounds exactly like what I want and then it sat on my shelves for absolutely ages. kind of want to keep it on my shelves anyway because I love this I love the book and it's absolutely gorgeous and do I have space to be doing that no but I feel like if I was to unhaul it I would be a bit sad because it is just so gorgeous so I, I don't know I think it's going to be one of those books that I don't think I can let go of just because I do love it and I, I love the idea I just wish it it had a better execution and then speaking of ones that I'm I'm in an iron about is The Vampire um, and other tales by of the macabre so the short story gothic collection basically the most so i finished the short story that i was absolutely loving the monos and demonos that was absolutely great i loved that one and then the one after it the master of logan yeah i i ended up just not finishing that short story it just wasn't doing anything for me i wasn't invested and the thing that's good with short story collections is you know there's going to be some short stories that you don't get on with and there's going to be some that you do now i have yet to come across a short actually no that's not true short story collections by the same author I tend to really like because I like that author and that's the reason why I've picked it up. Short story collections where there's multiple authors I think you're always going to find one or two that don't gel with you and that's absolutely fine and what I've learned is if I'm not gelling with it move on because then it lowers my enjoyment of the short story collection overall whereas I'd rather say to you okay so there was 14 short stories in here and I DNF'd one and I feel like that's a lot better than to go oh it was okay because I pushed myself through one that I wasn't enjoying. Um, so now I'm up to how many have I read actually at this point I've read we've done five one of those was a DNF so we've got a few more to go which will be going into next week's vlog I've started the victim and this is by an anonymous person and the first few sentences of this I was like oh yeah that that's good so we're going to continue on with that and I think yeah we'll just take my time with it I'm enjoying reading like one 
with lunch at work and I'm not like rushing to finish this but I do think that's the best way for a short story collection at least for me is to spread it out over time. It's just yesterday was a bit of a lackluster reading day I'm not gonna lie I mean part of that was the headache part because I have my Animal Crossing obsession back and it is in full force and I'm looking at codes on Pinterest and I'm watching videos on YouTube and everything but it's also that what I was reading just didn't quite gel with me but we did start off really strong with this week in finishing only a monster by vanessa len and this is so good i really want more people to read this like don't get me wrong it may not be your cup of tea if you're not a massive fan of young adult i can understand that and also if you don't like time travel magic then maybe you might just want to check this one out of the library before you actually dedicate yourself to picking it up and that's something i'm going to work on is picking stuff up out of the library this i really really enjoyed i think it was really good i really liked the way it just surprised me it just played with concepts and the typical tropes and turned everything on its head and I just didn't know where it was going and I really enjoyed that feeling and like I say you could read this as a standalone if you wanted to so I'm very excited to read the second book it's one of those things where I'm like I really want to read it now but it's in hardback and I don't want the hardback on my shelves so I am planning to go to my library in February because like I say I need to use my library more and I'm gonna give you a bit of a spoiler for the reset video but we have picked the book club pick for February for Discord it's Starlin House and I've decided I'm actually gonna see if my library has this one and while I'm there if they have the second book to this I might pick it up as well but that'll be coming to you in February the point is I really enjoyed this and I would say give it a try but that's it I'm actually gonna wrap up the vlog because there was no point dragging it out for another day and pushing through a book that I'm just not enjoying as much. Reading wise, I feel like we started strong, we're ending a little bit weak. Productivity wise, I've really enjoyed this week. I've got so much done. I feel really happy and really pleased with where I'm at with everything. So yeah, I'm gonna leave it here. So I hope you have enjoyed it. You'll have to let me know if you've read The Cloisters and if you've read Only a Monster and if you agree with me because I really like it, but I could also just be hyping it up just because it feels so different to me. Anyway, I am getting hungry, so we're gonna leave it there. But today Day, what do we leave actually leave a skull in the comments below if you've made it this far or if you just don't know what to comment leave a skull and yeah we're gonna leave it there so thank you so so much for watching i hope you have enjoyed it if you have then please do consider giving it that thumbs up subscribe commenting it really does help this channel out my social media links and anyone i've mentioned will be linked below and i will of course catch you in the very next video also side note i really want to change up this outro and i go to do it every time and then i get stuck saying the exact same thing because i've done it for the last like what three and a half years now if you have any ideas on what you think i should change this outro to feel free to put that in the comments below as well just like a bonus material if you made it this far anyway i am actually gonna go